afternoon preparations dear students i am professor n kijan retired professor of pharmacists from dr hari singh gor central university sagar and currently working as emeritus fellow of university grants commission at rajiv gandhi technical university bhopal i am known to you as an author of several pharmacy books today we are going to learn about an interesting topic relating to ophthalmics module 1 introduction all of us are well aware that eye is the most delicate organ of our body ophthalmic means relating to the eye ophthalmic preparations are sterile liquid semi solid or solid preparations that may contain one or more active pharmaceutical ingredient that is for application to the eye drugs are commonly applied to the eye for the localized effect of the medication on the surface of the eye or on its interior novel ophthalmic dosage forms include liposomes nanoparticles microemulsions nanoemulsions etc these dosage forms can provide sustained and controlled release of the drug at the targeted site the anatomical and physiological features of the eye are important in learning about ophthalmic preparations the structure of the outside of the eye and a cross section of the anterior segment of the eye are shown below in figure types of ophthalmic preparations ophthalmic preparations are available in different forms some commonly used ophthalmic preparations include ophthalmic solutions suspensions ointments gels emulsions and inserts all ophthalmic preparations must be sterile ophthalmic solutions ophthalmic solutions are sterile aqueous or oily solutions for sterilization into the eyes ophthalmic solutions provide more uniform dosage forms having better bioavailability and greater ease in handling during production ophthalmic solutions are packed in containers with a dropper ophthalmic suspensions ophthalmic suspensions provide a more sustained action by increasing the corneal contact time of a drug substance and are required when the drug is unstable in solution form or insoluble in the desired vehicle apart from being sterile ophthalmic suspensions must also contain particles that are non irritating to the eye and do not agglomerate into larger ones upon storage the suspension must be shaken prior to use ophthalmic ointments ophthalmic ointments also increase the ocular contact time of the drug the ointment base must be non irritating to the eye and must permit the diffusion of the drug through the secretions bathing the eye and melting or softening point close to the body temperature ophthalmic ointments are packed in the previously sterilized tin or plastic ophthalmic tubes pitted with a narrow cake tips ophthalmic inserts an ophthalmic insert is a flexible multilayered structure consisting of a drug containing core surrounded on each side by a layer of copolymer membranes through which the drug diffuses at a constant rate inserts are sterile and do not contain preservatives module 2 requirements of ophthalmic preparations ophthalmic preparations must be sterile and of such purity and quality that they are suitable for safe use in the eye the containers of ophthalmic preparations including eye cups eye droppers and other dispensers intended for ophthalmic use should also be sterile multi dose containers of liquid ophthalmic preparations should contain one or more suitable and harmless substances which will inhibit the growth of microorganisms thus essential requirements of ophthalmic preparations include number 1 sterility 2 freedom from foreign particulate matter 3 isotonicity with the lacrimal secretion 4 ph approximately equal to 7.4 and 5 optimum viscosity that is 25 to 40 cps sixth surface activity and seventh the sensitivity of ocular tissue to irritation module 3 
formulation of ophthalmic preparations. By now, we are aware that most important requirement for the ophthalmic preparations is sterility. However, we should also appreciate that most of the ophthalmic preparations cannot be sterilized in the final containers due to the thermal sensitivity of the active ingredients or excipients or package. Therefore, these products are sterilized individually. Hence, they are blended septically and fill aseptically in pre-sterilized containers using aseptic capping techniques. To minimize the chances of contamination during preparation and filling, ophthalmic products are prepared in completely sterile environment using aseptic techniques. Thus, for the preparation of safe sterile and therapeutically active ophthalmic products, the following factors must be controlled. One, environment. The environment required for the preparation of ophthalmic product is same as that for parentals. Ophthalmic preparations are manufactured and processed in aseptic area which meets the requirement of class 100 space. Class 100 space means an area having not more than 100 particles living or non-living larger than 25 microns. The aseptic area is constructed of hard impervious material. The air supplied to this aseptic area is made sterile by passing through high efficiency particulate air that is HEPA filters. A positive pressure is maintained in the room so that when the door is open the air flows outside rather than coming inside. The personnel working in this area must wear the sterile gowns, gloves and footwears. The inward and outward traffic should be minimum. Number 2. Manufacturing techniques. In case of eye drops, water soluble ingredients are dissolved in water and then sterilized by heat or filtration. In case of suspensions which cannot be sterilized by filtration, dry powder is sterilized either by heat or ethylene oxide or radiation. If dry powder cannot withstand heat or radiation, then it is dissolved in suitable solvent, sterilized by filtration and then crystallized aseptically. In case of ophthalmic ointments, the base is first melted, heat sterilized and then filtered to remove large particles. Pre-sterilized active ingredients and excipients are mixed aseptically with molten base. This molten base is passed through sterilized colloid mill and filled in previously sterilized containers. Raw materials. The raw materials used for the ophthalmic preparations must be of highest possible purity and quality. Each lot of raw material purchased should be checked for the established specifications. Fourth, machinery or equipments. Equipments used for the ophthalmic preparation have same requirements as those used for parentals. All parts of the equipment coming in contact with the product are made up of corrosion free material which can easily be disassembled, cleaned and sterilized. Preferably they are made up of a stainless steel. All machinery should be cleaned regularly in order to avoid the risk of contamination. Excipients used for the preparation of ophthalmic products must not affect adversely either the stability of the final product or the availability of the active ingredients at the site of action. The addition of coloring agents is not recommended. Unless the active ingredient itself has antimicrobial activity, ophthalmic preparations supplied as multi-dose preparations may include a suitable antimicrobial agent. Formulation The manufacture of ophthalmic products requires careful consideration of numerous physico-chemical parameters. The various commonly used ingredients of ophthalmic preparations are number one drug. The major types of drugs used in ophthalmic preparations include meiotics, for example, physostigmine, phylocarpine, neostigmine, etc., used primarily in the treatment of glaucoma, mediotics and cyclopagics. For example, atropine, hyosamine, scopolamine, cocaine, etc. Mediatrics allow examination of the fundus of the eye 
through dilatation of the pupil. The stronger mediatics having a long duration of action are called cycloplegics. Local anesthetics for example tetracaine, proparacaine, cocaine etc. Local anesthetics allow for the relief of pain preoperatively, postoperatively following trauma and during ophthalmic examination. Anti-inflammatory agents for example hydrocortisone, prednisolone and dexamethasone salts. These agents combat inflammation of the eye. Local antiseptics such as certain arnic mercury compounds as trimerosal, ammoniated mercury and silver nitrate. Local antiseptics are employed topically to reduce microbial presence on the eye. Antimicrobial agents for example chromophenicol, sulfacetamide sodium, gentamicin, tetracycline etc. These are used specifically to combat infection of the eye. Astringents are generally used in the treatment of conjunctivitis. Zinc compounds particularly zinc sulfate are most commonly used. Topical protectants including methyl cellulose and hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose solutions are applied as artificial tears or as a contact lens fluid. Number 2 vehicles. Vehicle is a medium in which the drug is dissolved, suspended or emulsified and that carries the drug to the desired site. Water for injection that is WFI is the most extensively used solvent vehicle for ophthal proportions. 0.9% WIV sodium chloride solution also known as normal saline is also an acceptable vehicle for ophthal proportions. Acceptable Viscosity has a narrow range of 15 to 18 centipoise. Muco adhesive polymers are also very useful in controlling the viscosity in ophthal preparations. They increase the bioavailability of drugs by delaying the time of residence of the medication in the eye. Oils are used as vehicles for several topical eye drop preparations that are extremely sensitive to moisture. A mixture of white petrolatum and liquid petrolatum can provide proper consistency for ophthalmic ointments. Oils used as vehicles in ophthalmic preparations must be of the highest purity. Third, tonicity adjusting agents. Tonicity modifiers are used to make the ophthalmic solutions isotonic with the lacrimal fluid. Body fluids including blood and lacrimal fluid have an osmotic pressure corresponding to that of a 0.9% solution of sodium chloride. Thus, tonicity modifiers are used to adjust the tonicity of the eye solutions to minimize irritation and discomfort. Generally used isotonicity adjusting ingredients include sodium chloride, potassium chloride, buffer salts, dextrose, glycine and propylene glycol. 4. Buffers Buffers are the agents which arrest change in pH of the solution. In operating solutions, they are used number one to minimize discomfort to the patient, number two to ensure drug stability and solubility and third to control the therapeutic activity of the drug substances. Ideally, an ophthalmic solution should have the same pH as the lacrimal fruit that is 7.4 so that it would be comfortable and possibly have optimum therapeutic activity. Normal tears having a pH of about 7.4 possess some buffering capacity. The installation of a medicated solution into the eyes stimulates the flow of tears which attempts to neutralize any excess hydrogen ion or hydroxyl ions introduced with the solution. Normally the buffering action of the tears is capable of neutralizing the ophthalmic solution and is thereby able to prevent marked discomfort. However, a few drugs for example phenocarpine hydrochloride are quite acidic and overtakes the buffer capacity of the lacrimal fluid. A variety of regulatorily approved buffers are available covering the useful pH range. For acidic pH adjustment acetic acid or sodium acetate or citric acid and sodium citrate 
are often employed. For alkaline buffer solutions, phosphate or boric buffers are frequently used. Buffering agent may also affect the activity of other components. Fifth, surfactants. Surfactants are mainly employed to solubilize or disperse drugs in solutions and dispersants. The use of surfactants is greatly restricted in formulating ophthalmic solutions due to irritation and toxicity issues. The order of surfactant toxicity is anionic greater than cationic greater than non-ionic. Several non-ionic surfactants are used in lowest possible concentrations to aid in dispersing steroids in suspensions and to achieve or to improve solution clarity. Polysorbate 20 and 80, Piloxipol and Polyoxyl 40 steroids are commonly employed. Surfactants can also be used to prevent drug loss due to adsorption on the container walls. 6. Stabilizers Stabilizers are agents added to a formula to stabilize the product by decreasing the decomposition of the active ingredients. Antioxidants are the principal stabilizers added to some ophthalmic solutions, primarily those containing epinephrine and other oxidizable drugs. Sodium bisulfite or metabisulfite are used in concentration up to 0.3 percent in epinephrine hydrochloride and bitartrate solutions. Sodium thiosulfate is used with sodium sulfacetamide solutions. For drugs that are susceptible to oxidative degradation, stabilizers such as antioxidants and or chelating agents can be included in the formulation to improve the product shelf life. Chelating agents such as disodium additate, tartaric acid and citric acid are also included in ophthalm preparations to inactivate the trace metals like copper, iron and zinc which catalyze oxidation of drug substances. Chelating agents and antioxidants can also be added together to stabilize ophthalmic products. Antimicrobial preservatives. Preservatives are the agents which preserve the product by inhibiting the growth of microorganisms. They are included as a major component of multiple dose eye solutions for the primary purpose of maintaining sterility of the product after opening and during use. The choice of preservative is limited to only a few chemicals that have been found over the years to be safe and effective for this purpose. These are benzylconium chloride, polycrate, thimerosal, methyl and propyl paraben, phenyl ethanol, chlorhexidine and polyaminopropyl pyguanide. The chelating agent disodium editate that is EDTA is sometimes used to increase the activity against certain pseudomonas strains particularly with benzylconium chloride. Benzylconium chloride used in 70 percent of all commercial after products is the most widely used antimicrobial preservative. It is often used in combination with disodium editate because of the synergistic effects allowing lower concentration of benzylconium chloride to be used. The effectiveness of any antimicrobial preservative in a formulation must be demonstrated by using the preservative challenge test procedures. 8. Viscosity imparting agents or thickening agent. Polyvinyl alcohol, methyl cellulose, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, hydroxyethyl cellulose, polyethylene glycol and carbomers are commonly used to increase the viscosity of thermic solutions and suspensions. They act by reducing surface tension and thus increase the ocular contact time, decrease the drainage rate and increase drug bioavailability. Compared to solutions and suspensions, ophthalmic ointments should be of very high viscosity to provide the residence time in the eye. Viscosity for ophthalmic solutions 
is considered optimal in the range of 15 to 25 centipoise. Methods of preparation. The manufacturing processes should meet the requirements of good manufacturing practices. Specific requirements for manufacturing of optimal preparations are prescribed in part 1A under Schedule M of the Drugs and Cosmetic Act and Rules. In process controls during production of ophthalmic preparations should include monitoring environmental conditions especially with respect to particulate and microbial contamination, pyrogens that is use of a limulous amebocyte lysate that is LAL test may be advantageous, pH and clarity of the solution and integrity of the container that is absence of leakage etc. Appropriate limits should be set for the particle size of the active ingredients. It is essential that ophthalmic preparations are sterile. An aseptic manufacturing process is usually employed when the dosage form does not allow routine sterilization methods to be used. Manufacturing techniques. Aqueous ophthalmic solutions are generally manufactured by dissolving the active ingredient in water and then sterilizing this solution by heat or by filtration through sterile membrane. Aqueous suspensions are handled in almost similar manner except that before bringing the patch to final volume with additional sterile water, the solid has to be suspended in previously rendered sterile. The sterile solid is then added to the batch. After adequate dispersion, the batch is brought to final volume with sterile water. In the preparation of an ophthalmic ointment, all raw material components must be rendered sterile before compounding. The ointment base is sterilized by heat and appropriately filtered while molten to remove extraneous foreign particulate matter. It is then placed into a sterile steam jacketed kettle to maintain the ointment in a molten state under aseptic conditions and the previously sterilized active ingredients and excipients are aided aseptically. While still molten, the entire ointment may be passed through a previously sterilized colloid mill for adequate dispersion of the insoluble components. After the product is compounded aseptically, it is filled into previously sterilized containers. Commonly employed methods of sterilization of packaging components include 1. Exposure to heat, 2. Ethylene oxide gas and 3. Cobalt 60 that is the gamma irradiation. When a product is to be used in conjunction with ophthalmic surgical procedures and must enter the aseptic operating area, the exterior of the primary container must be rendered sterile by the manufacturer and maintained sterile with appropriate packaging. This may be accomplished by aseptic packaging or by exposure of the completely packaged product to ethylene oxide gas, ionizing radiation or heat. Module 4 Containers The materials for containers and closures should not adversely affect the quality of the preparation or allow diffusion of any kind into or across the material of the container into the preparation. The container should be fitted with a closure that minimizes microbial contamination and a device that reveals whether the container has ever been opened. The eye drops should be packaged in suitable plastic or neutral glass containers. The plastic squeeze bottles having raised plastic cap and polythene friction plug contain baffle that produces uniform drops are preferred nowadays. Ophthalmic drops are normally supplied in suitable multi-dose containers that allow successive drops of the preparation to be administered. The container should be fitted with a temper evident device. The maximum volume of the preparation in such a container should be not more than 10 milliliters. Multidose ophthalmic drop preparation may be used for up to 4 weeks 
after the container is initially opened. Dropper supplied separately should also comply with. After the contents are normally supplied in small sterilized collapsible tubes fitted with a temper evident applicator. The containers or the nozzles of the tubes are shaped so that the ointment can be supplied without contaminating what remains in the tube. The content of such a container is limited to not more than 5 gram of the preparation. Suitable single dose containers may also be used. Storage. Ophthalmic preparations should maintain their integrity throughout their shelf life when stored at the temperature indicated on the label. Special storage recommendations or limitations are indicated in individual monographs. Module 5. Evaluation of ophthalmic preparations. Ophthalmic preparations are evaluated for following tests. Number 1. Sterility test. Two basic methods for study testing are direct inoculation method that involves the direct introduction of product test sample into the culture media and membrane filtration method that involves filtering test samples through membrane filter, washing the filter with fluid to remove inhibitory property and transferring the membrane aseptically to appropriate culture media. Contamination is detected by using two culture media, A soybean casein digest medium incubated at 20 to 25 degrees centigrade and B fluid thioglycolate medium incubated at 30 to 35 degrees centigrade. 2. Clarity test. Ophthalmic solutions are free from undesired ingredients and are essentially free from foreign particles. Visual inspection is conducted under a good light, baffled against a reflection to the eyes and viewed against a black and white background with the content set in motion with a swirling action. Instrumental method utilizing the principle of light scattering, light absorption and electrical resistance are used to obtain particle count and size. Instrumental method utilizing video image projection detects moving particles without destruction of product units used for inline detection. Third, leaker test. Ten ointment tubes are thoroughly cleaned and exterior surfaces of each tube dried with an absorbent cotton. The tubes are placed in a horizontal position on a sheet of absorbent blotting paper in an oven maintained at a temperature of 60 plus minus 3 degrees centigrade for 8 hours. No leakage should occur during or at the completion of the test. If leakage is observed from one but not more than one of the tubes, the test is repeated with 20 additional tubes of the ointment. The requirement is met if no leakage is observed from the first 10 tubes tested or if the leakage is observed from not more than 1 of 30 tubes tested. Fourth, metal particles in ophthalmic ointments. Contents of 10 tubes are completely extruded individually into separate petri dishes. The dishes are covered, heated at 85 degrees centigrade for 2 hours, cooled and allowed to solidify. Entire bottom of each petri dish is examined for metal particles. Number of metal particles that are 50 micron or larger in any dimension is counted. The requirements are met if the total number of such particles in all 10 tubes does not exceed 50 and if not more than one tube is found to contain more than 8 such particles. If these results are not obtained, repeat the test on 20 additional tubes. The requirements are met if the total number of metal particles that are 50 micron or larger in any dimension does not exceed 150 in all 30 tubes tested and if not more than 3 of the tubes are found to contain more than 8 such particles each. Additional tests include 
particle size and particle size distribution, drop size, aided substances and dissolution are drug release tests. Summary, like parental preparations, ophthalmic preparations are also sterile and hence they are to be prepared using best possible materials and under best possible conditions of manufacturing. Eye is the most delicate organ of the body, therefore the safety and efficacy of ophthalmic preparations must be ensured through adequate testing. Question 1. Discuss the common formulation ingredients of ophthalmic preparations. Following are the common formulation ingredients of ophthalmic preparations. Drug like myotics, mediatrics and cyclopelagics, local anesthetics, anti-inflammatory agents, local antiseptics, antimicrobial agents and topical protectants. Vehicles in which the drug is dissolved, suspended or emulsified and that carries the drug to the desired site. Tonicity adjusting agents to make the ophthalmic solutions isotonic with the lacrimal fluid. Buffers which resist change in pH of the solution. Surfactants to solubilize or disperse drugs in solutions and dispersions. Stabilizers to stabilize the product by decreasing the decomposition of the active ingredients. These include antioxidants such as sodium bisulfite or metabisulfite and chelating agents such as sodium aditate, tartaric acid and citric acid. Antimicrobial preservatives which preserve the product by inhibiting the growth of microorganism. Viscosity imparting agents like polyvinyl alcohol, methyl cellulose, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, hydroxyethyl cellulose, polyethylene glycol and carbomers which are commonly used to increase the viscosity of ophthalmic solutions and suspensions. Question 2. What type of containers are commonly used in the ophthalmic preparations? The eye drops should be packaged in suitable plastic or neutral glass containers. The plastic squeeze bottles having a raised plastic cap and polythene friction plug containing baffle that produce uniform drops are preferred nowadays. The materials for containers and closures should not adversely affect the quality of the preparation or allow diffusion of any kind into or across the material of the container into the preparation. The container should be fitted with a closer that minimizes microbial contamination and a device that reveals whether the container has ever been opened. Selection of containers will depend upon the type of ophthalmic products that is whether drops, suspensions, ointments, single dose or multi dose etc. Hope you all have enjoyed the topic. Thank you.